हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन सेमीकंडक्टर फिजिक्स होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग फाइन डियर व्यूअर्स हैविंग कंप्लीटेड द सेकंड यूनिट ऑन सेमीकंडक्टर फिजिक्स नाउ वी प्लान टू स्टार्ट द थर्ड यूनिट दैट इज लाइट सेमीकंडक्टर इंटरेक्शन एंड दीज आर द टॉपिक्स वी वुड बी अपलोडिंग वीडियोज ऑन एंड होप दैट दे आर गोनो यूजफुल फॉर यू गाइज we going to start with optical transitions wherein our learning objectives shall be why study light semiconductor interaction what are optical transitions what is meant by excitation and relaxation in context with semiconductor thereafter we shall be discussing absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission here we would be focusing more on stimulated emission because it is the process that finds use in lasers after that we will discuss population inversion in semiconductors let's begin with why study light semiconductor interaction all optoelectronic devices like semiconductor lasers leds pds and solar cells are based on the interaction of light with semiconductor that is how the semiconductor behaves with light photon falling on its surface that is whether it is absorbed transmitted or re reflected back note that not all light photons are absorbed by the semiconductor and it is this absorption process that generates electron hole pair in the semiconductor it means it is this process that converts light signal into electrical signal hence this interaction between light and semiconductor is very important to understand the working of all such optoelectronic devices so let's talk about the conditions under which the photon gets absorbed or transmitted through the material let us suppose that a light photon of frequency nu and wavelength lambda is incident on a semiconductor material having band gap eg the energy of the incident photon is given by eph is equal to h nu is equal to hc by lambda now photons falling onto a semiconductor material can be divided into three categories based on their energy compared to that of the semiconductor band gap eg if eph is less than eg the photon interacts only weakly with the semiconductor passing through it as if it were transparent when eph is equal to eg that is the photons have just enough energy to create an electron hole pair and are efficiently absorbed when eph is greater than eg that is photons with energy much greater than the band gap are strongly absorbed however for photovoltaic applications the photon energy greater than the band gap is wasted as electrons quickly thermalize back down to the conduction band edges typically this absorption produces electron in the conduction band and holes in the valence band out of many mechanisms possible such as reflection absorption and transmission mainly the optical absorptions have greater significance in creation and annihilation of electron hole pair and hence the overall efficiency of optoelectronic devices by reducing the reflection as well as the transmission losses as minimum to the lowest possible level one can enhance the absorption amount of incoming optical signal optical transitions among energy states the states with the lowest energy is most stable therefore the electrons in the semiconductor tend to stay in low energy states if they are excited by thermal energy light or electron beams the electrons absorb these energies and transmit to high energy states these transitions of the electron from low energy state to high energy states are called excitations high energy states however are unstable as a result to take stable states the electrons in the high energy state transit to low energy states in a certain light time as shown in the next diagram the transitions of the excited electrons from high energy states to low energy states are referred to as relaxations the excitations and relaxation processes between the valence band and the conduction band of a semiconductor are shown in the figures excitation is shown in figure 2b whereas relaxation is shown in figure 
थ्री ए इन सेमी कंडक्टर्स द ट्रांजिशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम हाई एनर्जी स्टेट टू लो एनर्जी स्टेट्स आर ऑल्सो नोन एज रिकॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड होल्स इन द रिकॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड होल्स देर आर रेडिएटिव रिकॉम्बिनेशन एंड नॉन रेडिएटिव रिकॉम्बिनेशन द रेडिएटिव रिकॉम्बिनेशन एम इट फोटॉन्स एंड द एनर्जी ऑफ द फोटॉन्स करस्पॉन्स टू ए डिफरेंस इन द एनर्जीज बिटवीन इनिशियल एंड फाइनल एनर्जी स्टेट्स इन्वॉल्व इन द ट्रांजिशन ऑन द अदर हैंड इन नॉन रेडिएटिव ट्रांजिशन दैट इज रिकॉम्बिनेशन द फोनॉन्स आर एमिटेड टू क्रिस्टल लेटिस दैट इज द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर ट्रैप्ड इन द डिफेक्ट्स एंड द ट्रांजिशन एनर्जी इज ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड इन टू फॉर्म्स अदर देन लाइट टू ऑप्टेन हाई एफिशेंसी सेमी कंडक्टर लाइट एमिटिंग डिवाइसेज वी हैव टू मिनिमाइज द नॉन रेडिएटिव रिकॉम्बिनेशन नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एब्जॉर्बसन एब्जॉर्बसन इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच एन इलेक्ट्रॉन इन द वैलेंस बैंड एब्जॉर्ब्स अ फोटोन विथ इनफ इनर्जी टू बी एक्साइटेड टू द कंडक्शन बैंड लिविंग ए होल बिहाइंड बिकॉज दिस ट्रांजिशन इज इंड्यूस्ड बाय द इंसिडेंट लाइट इट इज समटाइम्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इंड्यूस्ड एब्जॉर्बसन देर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ स्पॉन्टेनियस एब्जॉर्बसन द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंड्यूस्ड एब्जॉर्बसन इज सोन इन द डायग्राम Spontaneous emission is a process in which an electron or a molecule decays to an available lower energy state and in the process emits a photon. This process occurs naturally and does not involve interaction of other photons. This process can occur in solids, liquids and gases. The energy of the photon produced is equal to the energy difference between the electron energy levels involved. The emitted photons may have any direction phase and polarization stimulated emission if an incoming photon with energy equal to the energy difference between allowed energy levels interact with an electron in the excited state stimulated emission can occur and in this process a photon is emitted whose energy is equal to the difference of energy level involved in the transition that is e2 minus e1 is equal to h nu the emitted photon will have the same frequency direction phase and polarization as the incoming photon which initiated the process in the stimulated emission one incident photon generates two photons one is the incident photon itself and the other is an emitted photon due to stimulated emission these photons have same phase and travel in the same direction Let us now talk about population inversion. When light is incident on a material, the stimulated emission and absorption simultaneously take place. In thermal equilibrium, there are more electrons in lower energy state than in a higher one because the lower energy state is more stable than the higher one. Therefore, in thermal equilibrium, only the absorption is possible when a light is incident on a material. in order to obtain a net optical gain we have to make the number of electrons in a high energy state larger than those in the lower one this condition of n2 greater than n1 is referred to as inverted population or population inversion because the electron population is inverted compared with that in the thermal equilibrium in semiconductors the population inversion is obtained only in the vicinity of the band edges by excitation of the electrons through optical pumping or electrical current injection as shown in this diagram the population inversion generates many electrons at the bottom of the conduction band and many holes at the top of the valence band for your ready reference here is the summary of the three processes that's all in this video please like share and subscribe the channel for more such videos on the subject if you have any doubt please comment in the comment box thank you very much for your time thank you